Hi, this is Asia Now and you're watching the Weekly Wrap. First off, Malaysian athletes carved history after winning three gold medals in this year's Rio Paralympics in Brazil. This was the first time Malaysia has won gold in the Games. 29-year-old Mohamed Rizwan Mohamed Fuzi clinched the country's first gold medal in the T3600 meter sprint for athletes with cerebral palsy. Meanwhile, 19-year-old long jumper Abdul Latif Romli broke the world record three times in the men's T20 learning disability category long jump final. Short putter Mohamed Ziad Zulkifli, 26, broke the world record twice during the Short Putt F20 event, which is also for athletes with learning disabilities. Congratulations to them all! Next, a Philippine film has won the top Golden Lion Prize at this year's Venice Film Festival. The film, called The Woman Who Left, is a revenge tale shot in black and white by director Lav Diaz. It is about a wrongly convicted school teacher who claims vengeance against her ex-boyfriend who framed her. Judges said that the 20 films in the competition had proved to be of a wonderful, astonishing variety. Moving on to Singapore, medical practitioners have been strongly advised against starting relationships with their patients on social media sites. This is to avoid putting patients in a position where they may feel pressured or obliged to engage with the practitioners. The directive was included in the Singapore Medical Council's 2016 Code and Guidance of Medical Ethics. In Indonesia, the National Ulama Council released a fatwa or religious edict saying it is haram or against Islamic law for Muslims to start fires on purpose in forests or on plantation land. This was because open burning damages both the environment and people's health, the council said. The fatwa comes after Muslim-majority Indonesia promised to take a harsher stand against illegal land clearing which causes the yearly haze in the region. Last year's haze was among the worst in history and affected large parts of Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei and Singapore. Lastly, seven endangered Borneo pygmy elephants tragically died in Sabah, Malaysia after playing in a disused quarry pond. Five elephants, including three young calves, drowned while two more were put down as they were too weak to be saved. Only two in the nine animal herd escaped alive. The herd was trapped inside the pond for at least a week before they were spotted. There are only about 1,500 jumbos left in the Sabah forest. We now head over to Bangkok with our Thailand partner Nation TV for the latest roundup from the northern ASEAN region. Thank you, Kuala Lumpur. Here are the latest updates from mainland Southeast Asia. 200 Zika cases just recorded in Thailand, making it a country with one of the highest numbers of confirmed cases in the region. The health ministry said on September 13 that Thailand has recorded about 200 cases on Zika since January. It was the first time Thailand's health ministry has confirmed the number of Zika cases this year. The virus was first identified in Uganda in 1947. The announcement comes a day after health experts called on Thailand to be more transparent in reporting the Zika threat to the public after health officials played down risks from rising infections of the mosquito-borne virus. Health officials have expressed concern that disclosing information on Zika, which is linked to serious birth defects, would damage Thailand's lucrative tourism industry. Watch out if you want to catch a bus in Cambodia because recently the authority has just found out that 8 out of 10 bus drivers have just been found high on meth. Roadside drug testing by Cambodian police has uncovered that 8 in 10 nighttime coach drivers in the country's Battambang province were high on methamphetamine. Officials found traces of drugs containing both methamphetamine and caffeine in 80% of samples taken from the driver's urine test. Deputy Provincial Police Chief Chet Vanny said the drivers that tested positive for drugs were warned of the dangers of driving while under the influence and sent on their way. Since the beginning of August, nearly 30 people died on the country roads, a sharp increase that died in the first seven months of the year. This might be the good news of the region so far because President Barack Obama said himself that the U.S. is ready to lift economic sanctions on Myanmar. President Barack Obama has announced that the U.S. is ready to lift economic sanctions against Myanmar in light of political reforms in the Southeast Asian nation. U.S. President Barack Obama literally said during the latest meeting with State Councilor and Foreign Affairs Minister Aung San Suu Kyi that the lift of sanctions will happen soon. However, he did not indicate a specific timeline. 
President Obama told Suji that lifting sanctions is the right thing to do in order to ensure that the people of Burma see the rewards from a new way of doing business and a new government. Earlier this year, the U.S. has already eased some sanctions against Myanmar but maintained economic restrictions. Local Vietnamese residents are complaining over parties at nighttime in a cave by tourists. Locals and officials in one of Vietnam's most popular tourist destinations are complaining of the lavish parties held by tourists. Residents of Ha Long Bay, the World Heritage Site, are reportedly annoyed by the night parties held by tourists in caves. Parties usually start at 7.30 p.m. to 11 p.m. with several hundred guests who eventually sleep over on a ship. The director of a fishing village on Halong Bay said that the Halong is a world heritage site that they must preserve, saying that they cannot ignore the risks for profits. Vietnamese woman had large tumor removed, believing that she was pregnant. A Vietnamese woman who had mistaken a tumor for pregnancy was saved by doctors after a successful surgery. A 44-year-old woman thought she was pregnant, telling doctors she felt fatigue. Doctors found a large tumor instead in her abdomen and later successfully removed this 10-kilogram baggy flesh. The woman initially refused the surgery and genuinely believed the fortune teller who told her that she was pregnant. And that's all for the updates. This has been me, Patsurang Desha, Putarang Si. Back to you, KL. Thank you, Bangkok, and thanks for watching. I'm Dina Murat. Have a good day.